At the heart of Streamlit's power and simplicity, there are several basic web elements that we can use to display text, data, and other visuals. So to kick things off and start exploring these different elements, let's start by creating a new Python file named using basic Streamlit elements. And you can edit this file in any IDE that you want as long as it's not web-based, or you can just use a basic text editor. For example, I'm using Sublime Text. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these basic elements. I'm just gonna paste them in here and we can go through each line here. So I'm gonna start off by importing Streamlit as ST. And then from there we can access any of the Streamlit elements. And the most common text elements are going to be title, header, subheader, text, caption. And then we also have this one from Markdown. And so these are going to display text in different formats, different presentation formats. And so let's go ahead and start our Streamlit app to see what some of these look like and then we'll explore the rest. So you wanna go ahead and open up an instance of terminal or command prompt. And then from there, you wanna to navigate to wherever you have your file saved. And so for me, I have it saved on the desktop. And then we're going to run streamlet, run, and then the name of our file, which is using basic streamlet elements.py. So when you run that command, this is gonna actually create an instance of a web server in your terminal or command prompt that's going to host the streamlet website. So once we have our Streamlit app up and running here, we can see what those different text elements actually look like. So at the top we have our title element, and then we have a header, subheader, plain text. We have what is a caption format, and then as well as markdown format. And these can all be customized with different values. You can see you can even change the color as well as add in different emoji icons if you were interested in that. We can see here that we also have a divider element that's just going to create that simple line across the web page, which is really useful for dividing up different elements that we might put into our Streamlit app. And then we also have a LaTeX element here. And so if you're not familiar with LaTeX, it's actually a markdown language that is widely used in mathematics for displaying mathematical notation or formulas. So again, there might be a particular use case for that in an analytics or data analysis type dashboard. And then we can also publish code to our Streamlit app. If we wanted to showcase a code snippet or something like that, down here at the bottom, you can see what that LaTeX notation looks like as well as a code snippet. There's also some settings that we can customize in Streamlit by going up to these three dots and going to settings. The first one here is run on save. And what this is gonna do is it's automatically gonna update the app when any of the underlying code changes. So if we actually make some changes to our code file and save it, it'll automatically run. So if you're doing any development, this is a really useful setting to have on. We can also change the margins of the content in our app to a wider mode. Alternatively, you can also set this in code by adding the following statement, st.setPageConfig layout equal wide. And that's the same as checking that checkbox. We can also quickly change the appearance of our Streamlit app using these pre-built themes. So we have this light theme that's currently set. We can also change it to dark and that'll change the appearance or you can go into editing the actual theme colors and you can get pretty great over this by changing the font or the primary color, secondary colors and things like that. Streamlit also has several built-in methods that we can use to quickly display data tables and simple chart visuals. And so to work through some examples, let's import a few more libraries. So first we're gonna import pandas as PD, which if you're not familiar with the pandas data analysis library, I have a full video series covering it in depth that I will include in the video description below. We're also going to import the scientific computing library NumPy to generate some random numbers. And so I'm gonna create a new data frame object here, and then I'm gonna use NumPy to generate an array of 20 random numbers with three columns labeled A, B, C, and D. And let's go ahead and call the ST header method here. And I'm just gonna give it a description here, pandas data frame. And then I'm gonna use the st write method, which is just a generic method in Streamlit to just publish something to the app. And let's go ahead and save that and go back to our front end. And so if you refresh the page and scroll down to the bottom, we'll see now that we have this header that says pandas data frame. And when we've displayed this data table here with those random numbers. If we now wanna go back to our code, we can display some chart visuals, starting off here with a line chart. So I'm just going to, again, create a subheader that's labeled line chart. And then we're just going to call ste.line chart. And then I'm gonna pass in that data frame to that. And if we refresh the page down at the bottom, we'll now see a line chart that's being displayed 
with those random numbers. So you can see it's really, really easy to just with one line of code, we can publish a visualization like a line chart. If we wanna create some other charts, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this code a couple of different times. Let's create a bar chart, an area chart, as well as a scatter chart or a scatter plot. And for those, we're just gonna change these method calls to bar chart, area chart, and scatter chart. And we'll see here our bar chart for those different values, a nice area chart, as well as a scatter plot. And what you'll see here is these are interactive charts. If I scroll in and out, I can zoom in and out. I can also make the chart full screen if I want to by clicking on this little full screen icon. And then if I hover over the points, you'll actually see what their values are. Now, if you're using Streamlit to build dashboards to track and display real-time data and statistics, one element you're definitely gonna wanna use is the ST metric. And all this is is a really nice way to present a particular value where you're highlighting it and you can also show what the delta is in that value over time. So these can be static values or they can be dynamically set to some data source of your choosing. And so this is here what ST metric looks like. Again, a really nice way to highlight a key metric value and show how that value may have changed over time. Streamlit also has several built-in layout and container features that allow us to organize the presentation of our site elements. For example, if we wanted to display three of these key metrics and organize them horizontally into columns, we can really easily do that using the ST columns method. So I'm just gonna create three different variables. You hold three different columns and I'll set this equal to st.columns and pass in the value three. And then I'm just gonna copy and paste this two more times and just indent it with a tab. And then I'm gonna say with col one, I want to display this one. And then with col two and three. And if we go ahead and save this and go back to the front end, we'll see that we now have these three different metrics organized in a column format. We can also create different containers to hold our content both with and without tabs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new variable and we'll call this simple container. And we're gonna set that equal to st.container. And I'm gonna go ahead and give it a border. So I'll say border equals true. And of course you can reference all of these different methods and the parameter values on the Streamlit website and their official documentation. And then I'm going to say simple container dot write. And I'm just gonna have a message here that says this is inside the container. And then we'll just have an ST right here to illustrate that this is outside of the container. And once you have that container created, you can add things to the container from anywhere in your code. So again, I can just reference this simple container dot write and add something else. So this is inside of the container too. If we scroll down here, we'll see this is our container and this is our container too. And that other line that just was ST write is outside of that container. You can also create containers that have tabs, which is very similar to organizing your content into columns. And so let's go ahead and look at an example that I pulled from the Streamlit documentation. So again, very similar to columns, we're gonna call this ST tabs method, and we're gonna assign it to as many variables as we have tabs. And so here I have three, and they're labeled cat, dog, and owl. And then we use the with statement here for each one of the tabs. And then within them, we're gonna put the content they want to display. And so if I go ahead and save this and go back to our front end, we'll see here now we have tab containers with images that we can click through. So again, very useful if you wanted to display different chart graphics or different data tables. It makes it a little bit easier for your users. Instead of having to scroll up and down, they can just click on the tabs to view that information. So you can put anything inside of these containers. You can also create container elements that are initially collapsed and then are expanded on click. And these are great for content that you don't want to be displayed by default, such as figure explanations or references to some content. And so to accomplish this, it's very similar to the columns or the tabs where we're gonna use a with statement. So I've just created a subheader here that says expandable container. And then I've published a bar chart with some sample data. And then right below it, I'm gonna put a with ST expander statement and then anything that goes inside of this with statement is going to be within that expandable container. So let's go ahead and save this and go to our front end. 
And if we scroll down here, we can see there is my bar chart. And below this, this expandable container, if I click on it, it will give me more explanation. And again, you can put any information in here that you want to. Lastly, you can also add a sidebar section to your web app where you can place controls and other information that you always want to be accessible across your site, whether you're going to different pages or scrolling up and down it. And so to add a sidebar, we're just going to reference the st.sidebar. And then from there, we can call any of the other elements to add them to the sidebar. So for example, we want to put a header there. We can say this is the sidebar title. And then we can say st.sidebar. And for example, call the write method to publish just a simple sentence that says this is a sidebar where you can add elements and widgets. And so if we just go ahead and save this and go back to our front end, once we refresh this page, we'll see that the sidebar has been added here. So that covers how to use the basic elements available in Streamlit. In our next video in this series, we'll learn how to provide users with the ability to interact with our web app using Streamlit's collection of input widgets. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos.